Hello and welcome and in today's video I'm going to share with you the top 10 most difficult arc teams. So let's get into it. In at number 10 we have the Desmodus. And this is just one of those creatures which albeit isn't going to be the most difficult team out there. Getting those blood bags for that first Desmodus is definitely going to be a challenge and also just surviving the whole thing and getting to the area where they spawn is quite a challenge as well especially when there's so many of them all in one place and you just want to tame one of them and you don't want loads and loads of these things after you and obviously the getting of the blood bags will be a pain as it will take ages to extract a blood bag like every five seconds from your body but it's definitely well worth the tame the desmodus is one of the most useful tames out there especially for its sanguine elixir as it is an absolute taming cheat next up we have the bloodstalker and this has the exact same taming method as the desmodus but why is it more difficult well blood bags are not easy to get on gen 1 in any circumstance at all as yes once you tamed your first desmodus you have yourself a blood bag farm whereas that simply isn't possible on gen 1 and you just have to keep doing that same method and getting hundreds and hundreds of blood bags to actually get yourself a really high level blood stalker and these are definitely essential on the gen 1 map as they are pretty much the only creature which you can use to get around as flyers are banned on that map. And they're a pretty good shout on Arboration 2 as flyers also aren't allowed on that map. Although you do have creatures like the Rock Drake. Whereas on Gen 1 this is your only real creature which you can use to travel around at great speed. Like the Rock Drake on Arboration. Now next up we have the Giga. And I was going to put the Carcodontosaurus in this spot. But I decided to just discount it on the list as actually that tame isn't too bad and it can be somewhat friendly compared to the Giga tame. Especially considering how little resource you need for that tame and albeit sometimes it can be buggy. I would say the Giga tame is still just a little bit harder because of the amount of resource you need for this thing. And yes you can trap this thing pretty easily and then you just have to stand there. And shoot it and it's not going to be the hardest time in the world but obviously it is still going to be a very difficult one and considering its size and absolute mass as a creature you kind of expect that but hundreds and hundreds of trank darts does definitely take a while to get and it is pretty difficult to get as crafting all of those narcotics and then all of those arrows is just gonna take a lot of time and if you're breeding this creature on official then have fun with raising a creature like this for two whole weeks. This is why I am never an ARC official player. Now, next up, we have the Golem. And this creature is essentially tamed by shooting cannons into this thing's face. Or you can use rocket launchers, but it is a lot harder to do it with that method. Albeit cannons' mobilities are absolutely terrible, whereas the rocket launcher you can aim pretty easily. It's just more difficult to actually get it to work with the rocket launcher for it to deal enough torpor before the creature actually dies. As the rocket launcher is more of an attacking weapon where no one, absolutely no one is going to use the cannon to raid a base in a PvP scenario or anything like that. Rocket launchers with homing missiles will probably be used at some point and they definitely are used to destroy metal bases. But not cannons, that is kind of more of a taming weapon which can be used to tame things like the golem and also creatures like the astrocetus as well. And it definitely does make the tame very difficult as the cannons are hard to aim and very very expensive but it is well worth it as these creatures are absolute beasts of scorched earth and they can tear through any creature that spawns on that map now we have the basilisk and this is the first arboration creature on the list and actually the next two creatures after this are arboration creatures again arboration creatures are actually significantly harder to tame than one may think and in terms of the basilisk taming method it seems very simple on paper just get some rock drake eggs that's your only real option on operation but you can use wyvern eggs 
and you can use magma saw eggs if you want and then drop them in front of it without aggroing it and then it will eat them and then you have yourself a tamed basilisk but aggroing it is very easy and obtaining those eggs especially rock drake eggs on arboration is very very difficult if you don't have a rock drake already and even if you do have a rock drake it still is a challenge to go all the way down into the red zone and get those eggs and bring them back up the basilisk is definitely a hard tame but a very fun one which you should do at some point as long as it doesn't bug out but you know it's arc now we have the rock drake and you may be telling yourself well isn't the basilisk a harder tame as you have to get the eggs and also not de aggro it well this kind of becomes a more expensive tame basically just requiring air conditioners to raise it once stolen but obtaining that egg and also getting it out without a rock drake is very difficult and you can tame the basilisk if you already have a rock drake and it will make that tame much easier but if you don't then the basilisk tame may be considered a little bit harder as there are some extra steps but you do have to raise this creature as well on top of hatching it so it is a very very timely process which I'm, is why i'm putting it higher on this list than the basilisk but once tamed this is a creature which is essential on arboration and if you are playing arboration then you definitely want to tame these things as this is pretty much your only real way of traveling around the map like you would with a flyer and it is a such great achievement once you obtain one of these things and it is so so worth getting one of these things and you definitely definitely really should try and get yourself a rock drake as soon as you can albeit they are very difficult tames it is definitely attainable to an arc player with any moderate level of experience and the reaper had to be on this list this creature is one of those tames with an immense amount of steps again somewhat seeming simple on paper requiring you to get this thing down below a thousand health get impregnated by it and then just raise the reaper baby but there are so so many little things which you'll need to do in between that firstly finding a reaper then building a trap to actually damage down that reaper then going up to it and getting impregnated by it which can lead to you dying if for some reason it doesn't want to do the impregnation thing you can tell its health is low enough when it has a red glow then after that you need to get loads and loads of xp to get this reaper to be as strong as possible then after it's raised it's going to kill you so so many times and reaper pheromone glands are going to be used to kind of put yourself in the position that the reaper mother would be in but once tamed it is well well worth it as these are the beasts of arboration they deal so much damage and no creature can really stand against the reaper they're even stronger than the giga really in my opinion in terms of force and they're a lot smaller in terms of their size as well and they have a hell of a lot more mobility over something like the giga in at number three is the rhino gnatha and these creatures are very very irritating and difficult to tame as their tame method just has a wealth of steps and on asc at the moment and just into the future on asc you will just have a hard time finding these things on the island or lost island in any swamp biome as they are incredibly rare whereas on asa the spawns are somewhat fixed and they're really not difficult to find at all so it's significantly harder on the older version of arc due to their spawns but you can always just raise your dino account do the dino wipe command or anything that helps the spawning of dinos as long as you're on single players the dino wipes the command if you wanted to know is destroy wild dinos if you didn't know that already don't just put destroy all dinos i can't remember what it is this a command like destroy dinos that will destroy your tamed dinos too and you don't you don't want to do that at all so destroy wild dinos and that is going to dino wipe all of the wild creatures on the map and in terms of this thing's taming method you'll want to kill a male rhino ganatha to get its pheromone which is a challenge in itself because they have a lot of health and they pack a punch in terms of damage then get a bronto and all of those items which are on screen if you want 100 percent effectiveness the bronto isn't strictly necessary just use any kind of large creature but the bronto is definitely the advised then really you want a net gun for this so net gun it and then after that you're going to want to damage this thing 
down to a really, really low amount of health, as low as you possibly can. You may need to hit it a couple of extra times. I'm using Awesome Spyglass mod here, but that isn't on ASA at the moment, and so isn't the net gun, so you'll need to trap it in that case. And you can always use the magnifying glass if you don't have any kind of mods. To see this thing's health, the Torpor isn't really necessary. Then it, you're going to want to feed that pheromone into your Bronto, or whatever creature you're using in this case. I'm not sure what creatures can be used, the Bronto is definitely advised. Then, afterwards, it will come out of its kind of net trap and then it will impregnate a dino which is where you want to feed it all of those resources then it will collapse over and your rhino ganatha baby will be born <laughs> in at number two is the shadow mane and this creature really seems like a very very simple tame on paper but in fact it isn't at all this creature just has a wealth of things which can go wrong with it Namely that this creature will just like to aggro onto everything and you're going to need things like gilly and probably a trap as well to do this fully successfully or at least with the most amount of ease. And then getting the fish at the right size as well can just be a challenge in itself because you know arc is arc. But before we get into number one, I just want to list a couple of quick honourable mentions which didn't make it onto the list. The Trudon has to be mentioned on this list, so does the Carcodontosaurus, the Noglin, the Astrocetus, the Astrodelphus, the Titanosaur, all of the Titans which you'll find on Extinction, the Managama and the Hesperonis, all having their own varying difficulties in taming methods. So let's get in to that number one spot. And in at number one is the Amargosaurus. And this creature is by far the bane of so many people's lives, requiring Raj Clark 24 hours to actually tame this thing, which is insane for a creature, which, like, is unprecedented for every other arc tame. No creature has a taming method like this one. And if you do this, this taming method, in fact, you will probably not be sane by the end of it, allowing it to run around and fight with you until it is tamed. This is the absolute bane of any Ark player's existence. But we can't forget the Fenrir too. This thing is just, just, it's just too difficult. The top 10 armored Ark tames. In at number 10 is the Carb Enemies. And this creature has very obvious armor being a turtle and also it does have damage reduction along with that armor as well which most creatures on this list do actually have which is a nice ability to have and it's the benefits of having armor obviously and its tail is armored along with its back where its legs are obviously exposed and if you're taming one of these things you always want to shoot for that point on its body as the damage reduction and torpor reduction won't apply in those areas. Its head armor also does apply as armor as well, and I think the under of its belly does apply as well. Either way, this thing is a literal tank with loads and loads of armor all over it, and it is a great creature in the beginning stages of the game if you want to go out and farm those silica piles and oil if you don't have beaver dams at the ready but the oil part will still be extremely useful in the early game as taming an underwater creature can be a bit of a drag although the ichthyosaurus isn't too bad and will do a better job than this thing you can just have this really early on to do all of your oil gathering and it actually really isn't too slow in the water although it is pretty slow on land next up we have the arthropleura and this creature pretty much just has armor all the way along its body. Not sure if this has any damage reduction or torpor reduction or anything like that. But it is very heavily armored all along its body. If you call that armor, I would call it armor. It is definitely armor looking like. And it kind of makes sense considering it's an insect. It's its exoskeleton which does count as a form of armor. And in terms of this thing's use for the general PvP, not PvP, for the general PvE player, these things won't really be of much use to you. But for the general PvP player, these can be of extreme use as they can destroy any type of structures, which is a great option for doing raids. As these things are a really sneaky creature, 
and they do a heck of a lot of damage when it comes to destroying structures. They can even destroy tech, which is an absolutely insane ability for a creature of this size to actually have. Now, the Gacha technically does have a lot of armor along its back with those rocks literally sticking out from it and it kind of is generally armored all over. Although it doesn't have the most armor for any creature, it has an extremely amazing use, which is the fact that the crystals on its back can give you a variety of resources, which you can choose in the options menu in its inventory. But also, if you give it snow owl pellets, it can give you absolutely insane OP loot, which you really don't want to miss out on. And albeit it has been nerfed since release, it is still a very OP option if you obviously have a snow owl and a gacha to go around or even just a gacha to itself and you can see this in action here and you can even get gachas if you're really lucky to make you cement not cementing element element dust i think is what it's called although that isn't as useful anymore now since gen 2 released and in at number seven we have ourselves the velonosaur and in my opinion this is an armored creature you can kind of see its face is somewhat armoured and on its back, it's got all those spikes and things like that. I would count this as an armoured creature, but I'm not going to whack it up really, really high in case anyone gets too annoyed about this creature, as yes, I can say it isn't the most armoured creature out there. But it definitely is one which I think every Ark player should respect, as it has a great ability where it can fire its spines, I guess you could say, or spurs whatever you really want to call them, and just shoot them into any target. And sadly, it doesn't scale with melee damage, but if you level up your stamina, these things can absolutely pump these things in to any creature which you may want to be attacking. And also, with that, their stamina drain is one of the lowest in the game out of every creature. And I really think at some point you should give the Velonosaur a go, especially if you have Genesis Part 2 or Extinction because they kind of spawn on those maps. And mainly on Gen 2 actually, as the R Velonosaur is really a great creature. Just an upgraded version of the original creature, which I really, really like already. Now we've got the Stegosaurus and this thing has rider protection, so it's an armored creature and also with all of its armor plates all along it it definitely fits the list very well but why have i put this thing so high on the list comparatively you would just think this is just your generic herbivore well apart from just being your generic pretty good herbivore actually it is a great gatherer of berries and of wood as well since the tlc3 update this thing is amazing at doing any kind of turret soaking, berry gathering, and wood gathering on top of that as well. And um, Microraptors can't seem to attack this thing, which is very much to your benefit. As Microraptors, yeah, no one really likes Microraptors. They are so, so annoying in like every case. But you know, rider protection coming to the rescue here. But in terms of obviously their main abilities, they have three plate modes. The sharpened plate, that's gonna deal the most damage and also give you the capability to harvest bushes as you can't do it in any of the other plate modes as far as I'm concerned. Then you've got the heavy plate which is good for wood gathering and then you have also got, I can't remember what it's called now, you've got, it's something like the armor plate, either way it's what the other plate is. You've got the sharpened, heavy, yeah I think it's the armor plate and that plate is going to be great for turret soaking as it's going to give it so much damage reduction and it's actually insane how much damage reduction this thing actually has. Also, if I got the plate wrong, just list the name down below in the comments. I really do need to remind myself. In at number five is the Shadow Mane. And you may think that this creature isn't armored at all, but I did a little bit of research before this video to prove a statement which I was already gonna say about this thing. When making this video, I was gonna put this thing right in the middle and the reason why I'm going to say it's an armor tame is because it has natural armor. And it is called that in the game, so I'm counting it as armor. It has armor, and the game recognizes this, and it is actually where its saddle slot would be, as this creature doesn't have a saddle, but it does have natural armor. And the wyvern doesn't have natural armor. I was going to put that thing on the list, but, you know, maybe not. 
the Shadow Mane is definitely a lot more deserving of the title of an armored creature anyway, and it has a wealth of great abilities like you've seen there. Its mobility is insane. Also in the water, it is great as well. It deals a lot of damage. It's great impacts. It's great for boss fights. It's only real downside being the fact that its taming method is one of the most annoying in the game in my opinion, and I really struggle with it every single time. Anyone else, comment down below if you struggle with some Shadow Main Taming. Now, the Rhino Ganatha is one of the most recent additions to Ark, and you can just see how much armor this thing has all over its body, and it is a really great creature, but also considering it's an insect, it kind of makes sense. Basically, every insect in the game is armored. If you didn't know already, the Rhino Ganatha spawns on the island and also the Lost Island, and in the old version of Ark, it is actually extremely rare where a tool like Dino, Cre Dino Creature Finder Deluxe, sorry, can't even read the title of the mod, that is a great option if you can't find it and you're on PC, but if you don't have access to that mod, always just raise your dino count or use the command destroy wild dinos, as this is really going to work to your advantage, the destroy wild dinos command is essentially just going to destroy every wild dino on the map pretty self-explanatory. There's another command which is very similar to this, which will also get rid of your 10 creatures too, but you'll probably be doing this on a single player world of yours, because you won't be able to do this on servers unless you're actually running that server, and you know, you've got to make sure no one's taming anything at that time. Yeah, that can cause annoyance, but on single player, you're not going to want to kill your own tames. To tame one though, speaking of taming, you want to kill a male Rhino Ganatha and get the pheromone, like you've seen there. Get those resources, which were just on screen. You get yourself a Bronto. Those resources aren't necessary to tame it, but they are only necessary for 100%. Then essentially you'll need to net gun it or trap it. Net gunning is way easier. Then pull out your magnifying glass, or you can obviously use the awesome spyglass, which is what I'm using here. Makes it significantly easier, and then you just want to really, really damage this thing as much as you can. Literally on the brink of death, as long as there isn't any danger around, which could just quickly kill this thing off. As then otherwise, you're going to have to find yourself another female Rhino Ganatha, which really isn't going to be something which you can want. And obviously, during that process of it being trapped, you can obviously lower its health even more just to keep it down there. Then feed the pheromone to your creature, and then after a short amount of time for the net gun, I think it's only 30 seconds, and in the trap, I don't know, just let it out of the trap, I guess. Uh, it will impregnate your dino, then that dino will roll over, but during that stage there, you can use all those resources to get 100% effectiveness. Then this creature's gonna pop out of your, your, your tame, and you're gonna have yourself a Rhino Ganatha. Pretty cool method, actually. In at number three is the Anki, and I'm gonna put the Dodic in this position as well, as I think those two creatures really deserve to be in the number three spot. Not quite as good as the creatures in at two and one, but still an insanely insane creature. Don't know why I did the same word twice there, but these creatures are great harvesters of stone, flint, and obviously metal. The Anki being the more popular of the two, which is why I've done beer of it, because it's going to gather be berries. It's not going to actually it can gather berries, but it's going to gather yourself that metal and all of that flint, which is pretty much it is just essential in the art game. And the Anki is going to gather you all of that stone. Still very useful if you want to make spark powder, which is essential in making gunpowder and also stone is also a way of getting cementing paste if you have some chitin or keratin to hand too and obviously stone structures are made out of it so it is still a pretty essential part of the game too but the anki is obviously the more used creature and you can tell it's an armor tame just look at this thing it's got a lot of armor and it definitely is one of those kind of arc tanks which you'll see around and a sort of surprising one considering its size but it definitely is very worthy of the number three spot. Now, I know metal is a really, really useful thing, but I have to put the rock elemental in at number two for the best armor tames. This thing is literally a hunk of rocks. It is just all armor. This thing is literally plated with so much of the stuff, and it is an absolutely buff tank of a creature. And uh, sorry about there being no saddle here. My creature, not my creature, my character is just flying over it, if you haven't noticed already. But um, yeah, you know, I should have put a saddle on it. 
the benefits of force taming I guess. Either way, it's main kind of use on Scorched Earth for me whenever I use it is for defeating Deathworms to tame myself the best Mantises which I possibly can as they use Deathworm Horns to tame or Willy Rhino Horns but you're not going to find Willy Rhinos on Scorched Earth but they're also just great for absolutely obliterating everything and they're really good turret soakers as well. Their only real downside being their taming method of course which you know isn't the kindest to new ARC players. And in at number one is the Reaper. This thing is literally plated in armor and spikes, and it is one of the best creatures out there, in my opinion, in the whole of Ark, actually. It has a great atmosphere, great taming method, great mobility, and it is great all around. There's nothing really which I think I could do better with this creature, or Wildcard could have done better with this creature, actually. I like it's almost. A perfect tame and I have to say almost because you know there is never actually ever a perfect tame there is always going to be a creature which is going to be better at that job but in terms of this thing's taming method because I'm talking about taming so much for some reason you essentially need to get impregnated by it which you'll do by trapping one of these things then getting it to glow a pink glow I think it needs to be below a thousand health then go up to it it will impregnate you then just gather loads and loads of xp if you want 100% effectiveness otherwise just wait for this baby to hatch get some reaper pheromone glands to hand so the baby doesn't want to kill you quite as much so you can actually claim that thing and raise it as yours and then from there it's pretty simple you just raise up that baby and then you have yourself this absolute hunking beast of a creature which is an absolute joy to ride around on it is extremely mobile and can do so much and it does a heavy hitting amount of damage too truly the best armored creature but anyway, that is the end of today's video, and I really hope that you all enjoyed this one, as I really did enjoy making it for you. And as always, comment down below in the comments, what is your favourite armour tame, and I'll see you all later.